Amen. And, and I'm really grateful tonight. Thank you, Pastor Al, Sister Gina, for allowing me and this ministerial ta- uh, staff. Um, I'm just really grateful for our church. How many are grateful for your church? Come on, you got to do better than that. I want you to know what happens here week in, week out. Doesn't happen everywhere else. But I believe it's because we are on, we're, we're, we're in an, uh, a church that's on fire. Amen. And we're in a church where the Holy Spirit is moving. And, and, I, and God has been moving. Amen. And I just thank God for my salvation and everything he's done in my life, my, my wife. Amen. And um, I love you, Brianna. Amen. And I'm really nervous tonight, guys. <laughs> I'm really nervous, but it's all good. Amen. You know, um, I heard Pastor Al say one time, if you're not nervous, you're either lying or you lost it. Come on. So I hope I don't lose it. And I hope I don't lie behind the pulpit, so I don't want to lose, amen, all right. So let's open up our Bibles tonight, and and let's go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 6. Amen. When you get there, say amen. And um, Scripture has always meant a lot to me. And I won't be long, because I feel God wants to do something tonight. You know... You know, let me say this, that whatever preacher comes behind the pulpit and, and they're, how anointed they are, how many know that God always does more? God does more. We're just men. We're just men, but it's the Holy Spirit. Come on, it's, is there any disciples that understand the power of the Holy Spirit? I know that Sunday, pastor spoke a powerful message, and man, I'm just encouraged tonight. And if I lose my voice, it's all right, Amen. So Leviticus chapter 6, amen. And we're going to read tonight. And we're going to go through a little journey. But I believe God wants to speak, amen. Chapter 12. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest, somebody say the priest, shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn it on the fat of the peace offerings. Now, this is the most important part. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. I said a fire shall always be burning on the altar. And it shall never go out. Look at your neighbor and tell him, never, never, ever, 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 ever go out. Look at your other neighbor and tell him it can't go out. God, we thank you, Father, that you're here tonight. And Holy Spirit, you're moving. And, Lord, there's one thing that I know that you're, you're, you're doing here tonight, Father. God, you're reminding us that you're with us. Your presence is here, God. And just with you being with us, Father, we know that we can take the world. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for tonight. Hide me behind your cross in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, never let the fire go out. Go ahead and be seated tonight. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it, and it shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it, and he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar, and it shall never go out. <clears throat> Amen. How many are on fire tonight? Come on. I said, how many are on fire tonight? And, you know, it's and it, this is an expression, you know, of what God is really doing in our lives. And how many could say that God, in, God has been moving in my life? Man, I've been feeling the presence of God and God moving in our church in such a powerful way these last few months like I've never felt. And, and, it, and it, it's an exciting time. How many know we're serving God in the best days? We're serving God in the best days. You know, and, and this scripture means so much. Why? Because it's giving us a, 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 a visual and, 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 and uh, practical principles of how we're supposed to live our life. You know, and, and, and I'm going to piggyback off of our pastor because he spoke a powerful message about the Holy Spirit. How many can say amen? And, you know, there's something that we all have to do is we all have to keep our relationship with the Holy Spirit going. We all, have to, we all have a responsibility 
to keep our relationship and we all have a responsibility to keep our, our walk, our daily walk with the Holy Spirit nice and tight. Come on, somebody. Not, not distant, not loose, but, but together in one, in sync. And I want to use this scripture as a practical insight to what it is to keep the fire of God and the presence of God burning in our lives. How many want that? How many want to be on fire for the Lord? You know, fire is used many times in the Bible and is communicated as an image of the presence of God. And God revealed himself as a fiery bush to Moses. In the desert, he led the people through the desert with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And fire was special because it was given from God. For this, in this altar here in Leviticus, there were offerings that were brought in the morning and in the evening. But there had to be someone to be a keeper of the flame. Let me say that again. Here in Leviticus, there were offerings that were brought in the morning and in the evening, but there had to be someone to be a keeper of the flame, and it had to last throughout the night. It had to last throughout the night. Is there anybody that desires to keep the fire burning in your life? And it had to make it through the night. Now, let's, let's take a practical look at this. Now, the fire, it was there, and they were bringing offerings, and they were, they were bringing these offerings to the Lord. And, 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 but somebody had to tend to that fire and make sure that a, a gust of wind wouldn't come through. They were in the desert. I'm sure they had sandstorms. Come on, somebody. They had to make sure that the fire never got out. So what? somebody had to attend to the fire no matter what. Somebody had to attend to the fire no matter what. And we see in Leviticus as an example, the priests literally keeping the fire of God burning. You know, these priests were consecrated and they were separated. Is there any leaders that are consecrated and separated here tonight? You know, this fire is also visual for our passion. Is there anybody that's passionate tonight? And we see that the priests, they were there and they were, they were keeping the fire going even throughout the night, even throughout time where, where everybody was sleeping. How many ever felt like alone at times, but you had to keep your relationship with God alive? See, in those times, we got to cultivate a, a, a fresh new relationship, a, a, a new relationship, something new with the Lord. And, and we're seeking something new with him every day because how many know, like Pastor said, we got to come to service and expect something unordinary. Oh, God, he goes from glory to glory, and every single day he wants to do something new in our lives. He's not just giving us old bread. He's giving us something new every morning. And in this passage, we see God give his commandment to Moses to keep the fire on the altar burning at all times. We learn that it is a representation of the presence never leaving our lives. And it shows how you and I to be consistent. Somebody say consistent. In keeping the flame burning. And our responsibility is to tend to the fire daily. Wave at me if you've ever been a Boy Scout. Come on, somebody. Don't be ashamed tonight. Or a Royal Ranger. Come on, somebody. Now, I've never been. But I like to watch those Survivor shows. And they're right there with the, you know, with the wood. And they're trying to get the stick going. And they got the dry leaves. And they're trying to get the fire going. Right? It's not easy to make a fire. Practically speaking, it's not easy. You got to know what you're doing. You know, you got to know what you're doing. But there's something about it. There's not a formula to it. You just got to get in there and do it. And there's not a formula. And there's not like some type of formula that, that, that will keep the fire burning your life. You just got to get on your knees and do it. You and I have a responsibility to keep the fire burning in our life. And when we study this altar and when you study practical steps to keep the flame burning, you see that the priests were the ones that took care of the house of God, and they were the ones who took care of the altar. They cleaned the ash and cleaned the area and preserved the, ash, the ashes properly. That sounds like servant leadership to me. Come on, somebody. That sounds like servant leadership. See, they had to take care of the altar. They couldn't leave the altar dirty. They couldn't leave it just with all these scrap pieces. No, they had to take care of it. Is there any leaders that know how to take care of their ministry? And let me ask you something. I know that there's a lot of city group life leaders. Is, is, there, any, is there any life group leaders here tonight? I want you to know that your life group is not just a time to have nachos and Kool-Aid. Come on, somebody. 
It's not just a time to get together. I know the fellowship is good. I know the breaking of bread is good. But my friend, you have to understand that you got to create an altar for when your people walk in, that they come and they bring something to the Lord. You're creating an altar, and you as you're the you're the priest of that house, and you're the priest of that group, and you're saying, God, I want these people to experience you in a new way. City Life Group leader, you're not just there just to have a good time, but I believe that you're there to impact the power of God, and you're there to cultivate the Holy Spirit in that life group. Can somebody say amen tonight? Leader, you're not there just to always pat somebody on the back, but how many know that leaders, we've been given the Holy Spirit to lay hands on the people? Is anybody with me tonight? I'm trying to encourage somebody that the fire that you have inside of you is not for you to keep inside, but it's to let out. It's to let people know that God is moving and God has a plan. Serve in leadership. And we pray with them. We lay hands on them. And we have have a moment where we can build an altar together, where we cry together and we love people. How many love people tonight? Oh, I love I love to see people broken in God's presence. There's nothing like it, man. How many remember being broken in God's presence for the first time? And when somebody, you see somebody walk into your group, you see somebody walk into service, and they're broken in the presence of God, it's a priceless moment. So in other words, sometimes they could have even been looked at as a glorified chimney cleaner. Come on, somebody. And how many know there's no hype in cleaning a chimney? There's no hype in cleaning a chimney. No, there's no hype, my friend. But it's necessary. And the altar, even the priests, they had to clean the altar. They had to to, to take care of it. And and they were doing it when nobody was looking. My friend, I want you to know that even though they were doing it when nobody was looking, God was looking. And and God is looking at you, my friend. That the, the fire, the passion that you have for him. And you're taking care of your ministry. And you're doing the work of the Lord. My friend, God sees it tonight. But take care of it because we're doing it for the Lord tonight. There's something that we have to understand. Is that whenever God is, is, is doing something and there's a flame and a fire burning our life, sometimes we have to break out of our comfort zone and get into a place where we're, where we're, why we're reminded of what we're doing and why we're serving. How many know the Holy Spirit never wants us to be boxed in? We don't want to be boxed in. He wants to do something fresh. Can somebody say amen tonight? And if we can learn anything from this principle, it's never to forget the basics and to keep the presence of God in our lives. To never forget the basics, to be content in the presence of God. How many of you, we can't skip steps to this relationship? It's never a good idea. Can somebody say amen? We got to keep the basics. Somebody say basics. And I want to I want to transition because we see the fire in the Old Testament. It gets translated. Went into the New Testament. And, and we see the New Testament that John baptized with water and Jesus was to come and baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. So what was literal, what was happening on the altar, now happens in your heart. What guided the people through the desert, literally, you could guide your people. You could guide your people in spiritually. Because why? There's a fire burning in you tonight. Can somebody say amen? We see it translated through the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, 3, 4, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And Paul teaches the church in Ephesus about walking in unity. Can somebody say unity? Unity with the Holy Spirit, that this relationship in the same way must be kept burning and must be kept alive. This is the number one relationship. This is the first relationship. This is the one that you please. This is the one that you serve. This is the one that you listen to. This is the one that you're, somebody, is anybody with me tonight? Somebody shout amen. Amen. We are to be in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and keep the fire burning in our lives. And it's our responsibility to keep the fire alive. Look at your neighbor and tell me it's your responsibility. And today we see too many Christians that are not in unity with the Holy Spirit. They just make decisions, life decisions. 
They just make career moves. They just go and buy a house or they just go, they just go and, 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 and move away or, or they just go and, and lean on their own understanding without any relationship with the Holy Spirit. But my friend, I believe in Victory Outreach San Diego, there's a leader... There are people rising up that understand that the relationship with the Holy Spirit is first and priority. My friend, you and I can't afford to lean on our own understanding. Can you remember last time you leaned on your own understanding? Do you remember last time that you leaned on your own flesh and you didn't pray and you didn't supplicate your, your, your idea? You didn't bring your, 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 your plan to God? And what happened? When we lean on our own understanding, what happens? We start to veer off a little bit. I believe it, man. I believe that if you're going to even buy a home, bring it to God. I believe that if you're going to make some type of big move, bring it to the Lord. I believe in that, man. I believe in it. You know when Pastor said something on Sunday, that we got to pray without ceasing. We got to pray without ceasing. So sometimes, man, I know that you're at work. And I know you might be bored at your desk. But somebody thank God for YouTube. Somebody thank God that, you're, that your boss actually trusts you to be alone. And you could just be doing your work, listening to VOSD online. You could be listening to worship music online. You could be praying at your desk. Somebody has to thank God for those things. Why? Because we could pray without ceasing. Sometimes we get a little ungrateful when we, we don't look at our, at our surroundings. I'm grateful sometimes I could just be locked in all day, worship music, pr preachings, and I'm just, getting, I'm just getting fed. My friend, I want you to know something, that when we, when we live a lifestyle like that and we pray without ceasing, when we meditate on his word day and night, my friend, he directs us. There's nothing that like being directed by the Lord. We see too many Christians, too many leaders that rely on their own understanding. My friend, don't take advice from worldly people about spiritual decisions. And don't consult ideas and vices to do nothing but weaken the power of God in your life. Don't consult with something that has nothing to do with kingdom building. Don't consult with somebody that has nothing to do with your spiritual growth, my friend. But take advice and take heed to the Holy Spirit that when he's burning something in your heart, that you listen, that your heart is open and your mind is ready. I'm reminded of Hebrews 13, 7. Whenever I get into a place and I'm like, man, what do I got to do? I ask the Holy Spirit, but there's another thing I do. I am remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. My friend, I want you to know that you are a leader here tonight. Whether you're leading your home, whether you're leading your life group, my friend, you're a leader here tonight. And how much more do we need the Holy Spirit? How much more do we need the Holy Spirit? And we have our leaders, my friend. Just be worthy to be, to be imitated after. My friend, be a leader that you could be, that somebody could imitate after. My friend, be somebody that you, could, that you could put your hand to the plow. Because I believe that there's leaders rising up in this house. Paul teaches us in Ephesians that we are not to grieve the Holy Spirit, but, walk, but to walk in love and imitate Christ. And Paul teaches in Ephesians of keeping the wonderment of God and wisdom and unity in the church of Ephesus and how important it is to take up the whole armor of God. And yet these things all include one basic ingredient. If there's one basic ingredient that I could tie in tonight, why the priests set up the altar? Why the priests clean the altar? Why they brought sacrifices? Why, why, why you, why you do what you do? There's one thing. It's love. Come on, give the Lord a praise. It's love. Because we love the Lord. We love the Lord for what He's done. We love the Lord for what He's gonna do. We love the Lord because we used to be in a certain place, but we're not there anymore. We love the Lord because he saved us. I'm waiting on somebody who's grateful tonight. And it's love. We learned on Sunday how Paul taught in the school Tyrannus and he taught these disciples about the Holy Spirit and how to be one with him and walk in his power. Is there any disciples tonight? Come on, is there any disciples? God bless five of you. We learned this on Sunday. 
The power. Somebody say power. Power of the Holy Spirit. But even the best get a thermometer check. Even the best get a gauge on them. No matter the title, no matter the, how long you've been saved, no matter how, how, if you've been serving the Lord for three years, you've been saving, serving the Lord for 50 years. Everybody gets a heart check. And everybody has to be evaluated. And everybody is held accountable. Even the great church of Ephesus. Even this church came to a place where its passion was needed to be addressed. The great church of Ephesus. The 30,000 member church. They had every sign that said, welcome. You look great today. They had every coffee. Come on, somebody. They came up with the get lit coffee. Come on, somebody. Even the biggest church got a heart check. I didn't, I, 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 and I, I mean this with all due respect. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care about your title. There is somebody above you and I who's going to check our heart. Come on, give the Lord a praise that he loves us enough. That he doesn't let us stay the same. That he loves us enough. That even though when we, when we may be out of it, even when our mind is maybe a little bit lost, even when we maybe let, let ourselves get into depression, even when we let ourselves get distracted, even when we may cuss, even when we may be fighting with our wife, my friend, there is a God who still loves you. There is a God who's still willing to say, my son, my daughter, your heart is mine. You are mine. I'm not willing to let you go. I'm not going to let you get that far. Come close to me and let me check that heart. Can you thank him? Even the greatest church, Revelation 2, I know your works. I know your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and they're not and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, have this against you that you have left your first love. I see you doing everything. I see you getting in there. I see you evangelizing. I see you at your post. I see you at your life group. I see you giving. I see you pledging. But let me tell you something. Is your heart okay tonight? My friend, this church got off track. Why? Because they got caught up in the 30,000. Let me tell you something. That there is only an audience of one that we came to please. And his name is Jesus. His name is God. And when you go and you serve the Lord, when you go to please the Lord, your heart won't get bitter. Your mind won't get corrupted. Why? Because you came to serve the Lord. You came to bring everything you have to him. You came to bring your gift. You came to bring your talent. You came to bring your offering. You came to bring your family. You came to bring your will. You came to bring everything to the Lord. Why? Because we came to please the Lord. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to understand that this isn't a show. I'm waiting on you to understand that this isn't a game. We're dealing with hearts tonight, my friend. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. So are you too big to clean the altar? Are you too big to be a priest consecrated to clean the ash and preserve? Are you too big to preserve the tears? Go ahead, play. I'm done. Let me ask you this. I don't know, I don't know who's all here tonight, but maybe you've left your first love and it's time for you to come back to the Lord. And you remember when you were broken at that life group. 
You remember when you were broken at this altar on a Wednesday night, my friend? I don't know what level you're at tonight, but let me tell you something. Let me remind you that even the greatest get a heart check. I'm going to give you two points and we're going to come pray. Keep your why in front of you. Why do you serve? Why do you lead? Why do you give? Why do you praise? Why do you love people? Why are you called to do what you've been called to do? If there's something that you could do is keep your why in front of you. I don't know what God did in your life, but I know he did something. I don't know where you came from, but I know you came from somewhere, but I know you're going somewhere too. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And here's the second thing. Don't limit the Holy Spirit in your life. How many times have we limited the Holy Spirit in our life? And we limited the fire that's in us. It's not an emotional fire. It's a consistent fire. It's not a sporadic fire. It's not an intermittent fire. It's, it's, it's a consistent fire. It's a consistent relationship. So many times we can restrain ourselves from the next level because we limit the power of the Holy Spirit. You and me. The Holy Spirit wants to take you into a new dimension. We just don't know about him, but you walk in him, in his power, in his boldness. He wants to push you to the limit so he can take you to his level. You know, I've been learning something the past few years. I, I can only do as much as I can do, and God has to do the rest. But if I know I'm doing it to the Lord, if I know I'm doing it to the Lord, not to, not to anybody else, and we give honor where honor is due, but we, give, we all do it for the Lord tonight because he saved us. My friend, I want you to know that he will always see that. Be sure to come back to your first love when God filled you. With the life of his Holy Spirit, his fire from heaven. What can we do greater? We could do greater things in the city and in people's lives of San Diego. We're kingdom builders here tonight. I want you to lift your hands. I want to read a scripture to you. Just lift up your hands. 1 Corinthians 13, when if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but, knew, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. My friend, I want you to know that tonight God is calling you back to your first love. God is calling you back to your first love. He wants you to get reignited. He wants to continue to do an overflow in your life. The Holy Spirit wants a relationship with you. The Holy Spirit wants to be one with you tonight. Can you lift your hands and just thank Him that He's doing it tonight? If you, you came here tonight and you may be distant from the Lord, I want you to come to this altar. If you need to get another outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life, I want you to come to the altar. God is moving. Come and be filled. Come and be filled tonight. Come on, that's it. Sing the song. Hallelujah. And you're all I want. That's it. If you want more of Him, come out here. To, come to this altar. Make an altar here. Make an altar here. Make an altar here. Desire more of him. Desire more of him tonight. Hallelujah. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know. Help me know you are this. And you're all I want. You're all I want. 
Come on, that's it. God is here. God is here. God is here. Let him move. Let him move. Come on. Come on, leaders, come lay hands. Leaders, lay hands. Come on. Impart the anointing that God has given you. Lay, lay hands tonight. Lay hands. Believe for bondages to be broken. Where the Holy Spirit is. Oh, he can turn any situation around. Come on. Lay hands tonight. Come on, we're going to warfare tonight. Hallelujah. If you're speaking that heavenly language, release it. Release it tonight. Come on, if you desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, just lift your hands and ask Him for it. Come on, lift your hands and ask Him for it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, that's it. Just lift your hands. God's moving here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Come on, God's moving here tonight. Come on, that's it. Make this an altar. Make this an altar. If you need to get on your knees, get on your knees tonight. Make this an altar. Come on, we're going to spend some time in the presence of God. We're going to spend some time with our comforter tonight. That's it. If you need to make this an altar, do it tonight. We got time. We're entering into the throne room tonight. Come on, let's say leaders lay hands tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 